everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 15th of November and we made it through uh, Friday the 13th, 2020. So, uh, good there. As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this a like, comment, subscribe and share. Okay, so new videos this week. I published part 10 uh, of the Azure Masterclass. This was all about database services. So Azure SQL Database, uh, Cosmos, the open source, even things like Data Factory and Databricks and Data Lake. I also gave a talk actually to a, a group in South Africa Thursday morning, so I recorded that. Really all about preparing for the fundamentals series of certifications like the AZ, the DP, even the MS, the AI. Um, so I posted that and at the end my dog uh, wandered in, so he kind of said hello as well. So you get to see, meet my dog. It's actually a pretty quiet week in terms of updates. On the compute side, so there's a, a new selection of vCPU constrained virtual machines. Remember, the point of the vCPU constrained is you get a certain portion of a node. Now, the memory optimized, you get a larger proportionally amount of memory to the vCPUs. But if I get a huge amount of memory, I still get a lot of virtual CPUs. Well, if I have a piece of software, maybe like Oracle, where I pay per virtual CPU, and I just don't need the processing, I just need the memory, what these vCPU constrained VMs do is they essentially remove some of those virtual CPUs from the virtual machine, it doesn't see them. So then I can license less CPUs for the software running in the VM. Now it costs the same as the non-CPU constrained, but because it doesn't see them, I don't have to license the software uh, as much. So now there's a new set of virtual machines that now have that vCPU constrained mode. So if we actually go and look at this for a second, so if we go and look at those, what we'll actually see is it talks about all the different ones that are actually available here. And basically you can see the spec is the same as the non-constrained version, but you get less virtual CPUs. So now what it's saying is, hey, look, for, for example, this one, you only get two virtual CPUs, which you normally get a lot more for the regular one. So it just goes through and says all these ones are now available as these virtual CPU constrained versions to help me actually optimize what I'm spending in terms of the licensing for the things running actually on those virtual machines. There's now a new SAP HANA certified uh, VM SKU, the EDS V4. And this is built on the Intel ZM uh, Platinum Cascade Lake processors up to 504 gigabytes of RAM, in addition to, I think, 2.4 um, terabytes of storage. .NET 5 is now available in the app service. So again, the app service is constantly adding new runtimes I can use, but if we jump over to here, and if I just go and create a new app service, you can see over here, what we'll now see in our list of ones available for kind of that runtime stack is we now see .NET 5. So up here we see this. In addition to kind of all these others, remember .NET Core, Java, Node, PHP, Python, Ruby, etc. Um, all of those available to us. On the networking side, um, I mentioned these back in June or July, so I'm not really gonna go over a lot of detail, but essentially these Azure Firewall features are actually GAing this quarter. So the Firewall Custom DNS, this was actually a, about me, just like at a VNet level, I can specify Custom DNS. Now on the Azure Firewall, it can be configured to use Custom DNS servers. DNS proxy was basically now, I can enable a proxy feature of the firewall so that I can actually set it to be used for the DNS. And then it can now have consistency for what it's doing between um, fully qualified domain name filtering rules, etc. And we had the fully qualified domain name filtering in my network rules. So now both in and out uh, from the internet, 
I can use fully qualified domain names. So those rules are all hitting GA. Storage, a, a new a new skew of kind of Cosmos DB. So Cosmos DB, one of the challenges of Cosmos DB is the request unit. This is how we pay for it, it's consumption. And it used to be it was purely just a fixed provisioning. I set a number of RUs and hope I got it right or I'd pay for more than what I wanted or I didn't do enough and it would get throttled. Then they had auto scale. I could set a minimum max. Now they have this serverless option. So the serverless will literally just bill me for what I use up to 5,000 RUs. Now there's some limitations around it. It can only be in a single region, but now it's just another option. It removes some of that barrier to onboarding to Cosmos DB. It might be good for some of the lighter workloads. So certainly now it's available in preview uh, to go and try that out. Both SQL Server reporting services and SQL Server analysis services now have VM images just in the Azure marketplace. So again, that's gonna help me more easily on board those workloads to Azure. I can just go to the marketplace and there's a pre-built image, pre-configured um, with those applications. And premium tier is now available for ADLS Gen 2. Remember, the Azure Data Lake storage is kind of that true file system. It sits on top of the Blob object store. So Blob has had a premium tier for a while, but now what I can actually do with this is even after I select kind of the premium and the block blob type, I can still go and turn on the hierarchical namespace to get that lower latency, that higher performance, if I need that for my data lake. So again, if we kind of jump over for a second, if we look at this, now, if I go and create one of my storage accounts, so I'll go home, we'll go and look at my storage accounts quickly. And if I add one, so down here we can do this kind of the, the performance. So have this kind of premium and standard. So if I select premium, you'll notice here the objects now. If I change it to premium, now I can do block blob. But now, even after I've set that option, if I now go to my advanced, I still have the option to turn on the hierarchical namespace. So that will then give me that true file system capability. I can do things like a rename, which I can't do with blob blob. I have to kind of copy it and then delete the old one, which is slow. This actually has that true hierarchy. It has the POSIX style ACLs. It's a true file system with structure. So that's what I want to use for my data lake, where I just bring the data in and I can kind of leave it in its source format because I don't know what transformations I might want to do in the future. It changes that extract transform load to that extract load transform. And I can always come back to that date in the data lake later on and transform it in a different way uh, to maybe answer a different question. Uh, I don't yet know I have. And then my link has stopped working. There we go. Okay. There. Yeah. Miscellaneous. So, PowerShell 7.1 was released. Uh, hopefully everyone's using um, PowerShell Core. It's a nice thing about PowerShell 7, they renamed it all back to just PowerShell. It is still based on the core version. It's cross-platform, so I can run this on Linux and Mac OS, obviously Windows. So 7.1, mainly quality of life, um, user feedbacks in there. AZ Predictor uh, has been released. So one of the things built on 7 is they have this ability to have a PS reline, a read line module, which gives you prediction based on history of the command I might be typing in. So what this AZ predictor does is just for the Azure PowerShell module, it also adds intelligent based on the context of what you're doing and what you've done, what most likely the next command you probably want to do is. So I've installed that. So if we jump over to terminal, so this is running. So there's a couple of different things you have to install to get this. I've added it to my profile. But essentially, watch as I start typing. If I do um, get, notice what it's doing. Now it's all these AZ. And we can see some of them are based on my history, but some of them are based on this AZ predictor. Now it's, it's learning, it's actually talking to the cloud. And it's going to say, well, what most likely do you want to do? And I can kind of just select one. I do the right arrow to select it, and then I can start typing other stuff. And again, it's showing me stuff I might want to do. 
Now, if I push F2, it switches between list view and kind of this inline view. So I can push F2 to keep switching between where it's showing me kind of that information. And again, I can kind of scroll down the one I want, and then I can just push left to select it and then start typing. And it's showing me kind of what the actual parameters are that I may want to use. Or I can just do Control Z, kind of revert to where I was, escape, just to get rid of all of them. So it's kind of this nice thing. I, I think about it as, well, if I'm really new, I probably want that kind of list view where it's going to show me all the parameters. If I may be more experienced, I just want to speed things up. Uh, I quite like that inline view. So there's a few things required for this. So if I can just install the release 7.1, I don't need any previews. But then there's a preview version of the PS Readline module I have to install. And then once I've done that, I have to install this AZ Predictor, which is a plugin for the PS Readline. And then I kind of get that new capability I just showed. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, attack simulation training, nothing to do with Azure, which was pretty cool. If you have E3 or above, what this does is it lets you emulate phishing attacks against your users. There's a range of attacks it includes. And what I can do is kind of see how my users would actually react to these. Let's see if that's loading. Come on, load up. Maybe it did. Oh, there we go. And so what we can see here is there's a whole bunch of different attacks. And it's designed to simulate those types of attacks against my user, see what they would do. And then I can see how I'm performing based on history, what we should be doing, and then use that as kind of feedback to them to help train my users. So again, nothing to do with Azure. I just thought it was a, a pretty cool feature out there um, that you can now leverage if you're an E3 or above uh, customer. Then there's a bunch of new Azure Advisor recommendations. Um, again, you can kind of check them all out. I've got them in the, the kind of link below of this article. But it really talks about things like, hey, make sure you upgrade the Azure Arc agent if it's out of date. Um, don't override the host name with App Gateway. Deploy VMs close to the WVD deployment for the best performance. Uh, and then upgrade to the latest immersive reader SDK. So just a few advisors they've added um, to Azure Advisor. And that's it. Uh, I told you it was pretty light this week, um, but I hope that was useful. Um, again, hope you had a, a great Friday the 13th. We're in November, soon it's December. Um, and I hope everyone has a, a great weekend. And as always, stay safe.